Peter Chang here for Macho Cave, and today we're going to rebuild a team associated SC10 differential gear. And pretty much, this is just your plain RTR gear. Uh, the reason why you might want to rebuild it is a common problem with RTRs is that uh, you might hear a grinding noise emitting from the uh, differential. And if that's the case, go ahead and uh, go ahead and start pulling your transmission apart. Uh, it might be a little hard to pull apart because it's all thread locked together, but uh, go ahead and pull it apart and go ahead and start cleaning out the uh, differential gear. Um, I'm using an alcohol swap to clean out the differential gear to remove all the oils and stuff out from it. Uh, the reason why I like to use the alcohol swap is that it uh, evaporates quite easily uh, and also it does a thorough job of cleaning. So when you rebuild your differential gear you have a couple of options. You could buy a rebuild kit, you could uh, just buy uh, additional shims to reshim the kit. Uh, also you could also buy a brand new differential as well. Uh, in this case I'm just going to go ahead and start constructing this from a differential rebuild kit which is about uh, retails about nine dollars to ten dollars at your local hobby shop and in this case I'm just removing the uh, old o-ring I'm just going ahead and putting on the new shim there and it just goes right behind the uh, sun gear and it's kind of hard to put in there so let me just get the uh, o-ring correct and the uh, sun gear in there so that's looking good and also the uh, I'm just putting the uh, cross pin in there it's kinda hard if you have it properly shimmed uh, trying to put the uh, cross pin on is uh, should be uh, fairly difficult if it's uh, if it's very easy if the cross pin fits too easily uh, then you know that uh, you might need to add another shim so here I am I'm putting on the uh, sun gear and I'm just using a ceramics tool there uh, to making sure that's all fits in, fits in there all right. Uh, just doing another additional cleaning. Uh, just making sure that the uh, the old uh, grease and stuff is out from there. All right. Now I'm assembling another cross pin uh, with what uh, Team Associated calls the planet gear. I want to call it the uh, planetary gear. Uh, years ago there was a uh, kit by Tamiya that, that calls this thing uh, planetary gear. So used to calling it that. Um, in a sense you just you just get the, uh, get the uh, cross pins lined up and you assemble the, the four uh, planet gears on there. And it could be a little tricky lining it up. Um, also if you have a lot of grease you might want to uh, just try cleaning it off there. Um, the reason why I'm cleaning it so thoroughly is that uh, I'm going to fill it with uh, differential fluid uh, instead of the uh, black grease. So I don't want the uh, black grease and the differential fluid to be uh, mixing together. Uh, instructions also call that you could also use uh, black grease as well. So I'm just giving the the uh, outer, outer rim a spin there making sure that the uh, planet gears are, are moving correctly and it looks like they are and just doing another chuck there to make sure that it's uh, spinning up correctly and once that's all set I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add in my uh, my uh, uh, differential fluid here and a couple of different weights of differential fluid you could try uh, 7,000 is a good mid-range for differential fluid. I like the uh, 10k version of the fluid myself. Uh, just depends on what works best at your local track. Uh, they do seal it very very nicely so you just have to remove that that uh, cap and uh, go ahead and put it back on and then uh, pour the uh, differential fluid in there. And I like to pour a lot in there. Some guys uh, don't 
don't warrant don't think you warrant a lot um i'm just tired of rebuilding this uh, gear to differential so um I, i'm just hoping that this uh, this fluid in there uh, would last a little while. So I'm just going to apply like a liberal amount of uh, differential fluid in there. So once again, once I got the uh, fluid in there, I'm just going to check the uh, planet gears to make sure that they're spinning correctly. Um, I just don't want to put in so much fluid that it uh, it gets loose and everything uh, doesn't spin up. Um, I'm just going to apply some black grease to this cardboard seal. Uh, I'm just going to apply black grease to, to one side of this cardboard seal so that it, uh, in a sense, just stays in place, really. I don't want this... Uh, uh, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and apply it for both sides. I don't want my uh, differential fluid uh, leaking out from my uh, gear differential. So uh, hopefully the, the black grease would act as a, sort of a, a sealant so that, so that uh, the differential fluid doesn't come leaking out. And that's my little trick for keeping in the uh, differential fluid in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and line it up and then do my best not to mix the black grease with the differential fluid together. There we go. So you just have to be a little bit patient uh, when you're when you're uh, lining that up. That looks good. And I'm just gonna put some black black grease. Uh, I was gonna just place it right on the area that I want it to, but uh, once again, it's just, I don't have much control from that bottle, so I just like smear it on my hand and then smear it back on the uh, cardboard old ring there. All right, so I'm gonna put in the uh, top half in there. And this top half has the uh, sun gear and the O-rings and stuff on there, so that's already been set up. Uh, once again, it was just uh, it was kind of hard putting on the uh, cross pin to that. Uh, if you properly shim it, uh, it should be uh, it should be kind of difficult to to do that. Uh, once again, I'm just going to apply some differential fluid to this top half before I finish capping it on and it just requires like a little patience I'm just gonna uh, make sure I get this thing properly lined up and once it's properly lined up uh, it should work just awesome so um, I got uh, got some of the uh, planet gears out of alignment so I'm gonna go ahead and realign this and I'm pretty sure after watching this, you would do a much better job than, than I do on this one here. So let's go ahead and things are getting a little messy. Uh, the ceramic tool just comes in super handy. And uh, if you don't have a ceramic tool, you could also use a, a uh, toothpick. Um, I've also seen uh, some drivers actually use a, a pen or... Uh, or a screwdriver if you will so it's uh any any kind of pointy tool would would work as well too so I'm just gonna try to get this back into alignment here and just apply a little bit more differential grease or uh, not grease but differential fluid in here there we go And pretty much, we're going to go ahead and try this again. Uh, I'm just going to be like a little bit more patient with, with uh, applying the top cap on there. Um, it's getting a little messy, so I'm going to just grab another alcohol swab and, and uh, uh, just clean things up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get the uh, black grease around there so once again just the black grease just serves as the uh, sealant there we go and uh, pretty much uh, once you once you got this all properly lined up 
uh, this would actually get rid of that uh, grinding sound if your SC10 is making a grinding sound when you're driving around. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab the top half and uh, we'll try that again. So it's going to be a little bit more patient this time. Um, if you if you rush, uh, you tend to make a little bit more mistakes, uh, and it's uh, it's just kind of unfortunate because like sometimes you're you're so close to completing it, then then uh, you just kind of mess up because you're you, you just do one thing a little too quickly. So uh, just take your time. Uh, enjoy the process of building out the part and repairing your RC car. All right, and then just making sure that this lines up. And then once it's all properly lined up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and screw on the uh, four little screws there that keep the uh, gear differential together. There we go. It's looking promising. So just, uh, I'm a kind of a peeker. I always want to just take a look to make sure that everything's going okay. There we are. And it's, uh, it's looking better. I'm just going to make sure this, I am just can't get, quite get the sun gear aligned perfectly. There we go. That looks good. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab the screws and uh, start screwing this thing in again. Uh, once again, I'm just using another alcohol swab just to clean my hands there so I don't uh, accidentally start dropping out the, the screws here. Alright, so, and I still have the, uh, the trusty uh, Allen wrench kit that came with my RTR here. And I would highly suggest uh, upgrading this if you get the chance to. Uh, when you first get your RTR, you're pretty excited and you're racing or in bashing all the time and uh, you may not uh, you may not have the uh, screws just yet uh, or the uh, tools just yet so it's really nice that the RC companies include uh, at least a rudimentary kit for you to uh, get started with uh, diagnosing and making repairs to your RTR and what I'm going to do is once I get this first screw in I'm going to do I'm going to put place the next screw in in a uh, star pattern so that uh, um, it it uh, the gears don't all, all weigh down on one side necessarily. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, continue with the star pattern. So here we go, and I'm just going to get the third screw in there, and once again just continuing along with the uh, star pattern and I'm a little too into rebuilding this gear differential and um, apologize for the uh, autofocusness of this part of it the video uh, but just uh, just want to let you know that uh, uh, when you're building it um, just be patient with it and uh, it should be built uh, pretty pretty quickly and pretty easily um, it takes about, if you're doing everything correctly and by the book, it should take about uh, 30 to 40 minutes to to uh, do everything. Uh, if you know what you're doing, it you could probably do this much quicker in less time. So, there you have it. The gear differential is now uh, rebuilt there. And, oh, it looks like I just got one last screw there. So, we'll get this one in. And once this last one is in here, the gear differential is totally rebuilt. And then uh, you begin the process of testing the gear differential to make sure that it's uh, working correctly. So I didn't uh, screw everything down uh, super tight. I'm just uh, now going back and just making sure that everything is tightly in there. Um, also, I'm just going to just clean this uh, differential in case anything's leaked out. I don't want any uh, extraneous differential fluid leaking out from there. And there we go. That's pretty much it for rebuilding your gear differential.
and now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, run through some testing. So if you if you could uh, uh, just bear with me a sec, I'm just going to clean up the space for a little bit here. Um, my uh, hex deck is all uh, it's all kind of messy with black grease and also with uh, uh, differential fluid as well too. So I'm just going to give this uh, one last cleaning here. And pretty much um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jam uh, two Allen wrenches in the in the two sides of the outer diffs. And if everything is spinning okay, uh, it should the gear differential should lock when I try to uh, when I try to turn it when when uh, the two Allen wrenches are are in place. So right now it's it seems like it's working. If I spin one side of the, of the outer diff, the other outer diff goes the opposite way. If I spin the other one, the other one goes the opposite way, so that's working great. Uh, now I just need to make sure that um, if, I, if I jam the two outer diffs and I try to move the gear diff, uh, if, I, if I can't move the gear diff anyways, there we go. Uh, it looks like there's some give, but it's, uh, uh, it's totally my fault. It's just that the I'm not using a thick enough uh, Allen wrench inside the uh, outer diff rim there, so it's uh, and I apologize for the out of focusness. But pretty much, this is how you rebuild a Team Associated SC10 gear differential. And pretty much, just want to let you know if you're a beginner, this is not a uh, daunting task. It's just a task that requires some patience. And also, it's a great chance for you to slightly modify the gear diff by adding in some different uh, differential fluid inside the gear differentials. So, thanks for watching, and remember, everything matters.